Ja nie ma do prawa się to dziewać. I thought instead of presenting you a formal presentation, I wanted to have a dialogue with you about my segment of presentation. And I wanted this dialogue to be somewhat practical in nature because as you have seen, Leitul Katala is rich in content. There are multiple perspectives. There are different layers. And all of us relate to this wonderful spiritual experience in our own different ways. I would like to take, for the time that I have, you know that the Holy Prophet was given 23 years from when he received the revelation till the end. We are given only 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a massive task, yes? Oh, go on the stage? Okay, all right. If you insist. <laughs> No, just that it's enough. <coughs> Time is short, so I'm going to get to the point as quickly as I can. I would like you members of the Jamaat to imagine. It's the year 610 of the Common Era. 1,000 405 years ago, Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where is he? He is sitting on his cave of Mount Hira that has been known as the Mountain of Light, Jabal al Nur. And he's sitting in this cave. And he's been there for days. And what is he doing? in that cave. He is sitting in Ibadat. He is sitting in Bangi. And at a particular time, which is known as the period of Noor, while sitting in Bangi, he had an absolutely unique and extraordinary experience. And that experience came to be recorded in the Revelation as this Leitul Katana, the night in which the Holy Prophet received a revelation. What was that revelation? Before I go into it, just to give you some background, Allah had sent 124,000 prophets 104 divine books, four of which are mentioned in the Holy Quran. The Psalms of David, the Torah of Moses, the Gospels of Jesus Christ, or Injil of Isaiah, and Holy Quran that came to Holy Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did you know, by the way, all of these books, they were all revealed on the Turkada of that time, on the 23rd of Ramzan. It was not just the Holy Quran that came on the 23rd of Ramzan, 610 AC. All the other books that came previously to other prophets, they all came on the month of Ramzan. So guess what? When the time of the Holy Prophet came, I'm just, I'm just improvising to say, people must have said, what, another book? <laughs> so what did the Holy Prophet receive? So on the night of Red Tulkada, is this what came to him? What you see in my hand? We say, because in our, in our mind, in our imagery, the book of the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah, here it is. But was this that came to him? 
now. You know very well in history, this came later, even after the death of the Holy Prophet. And there is a history how the Holy Quran was compiled and by whom and so on and so forth, which does not concern us right now. What is more important is to look at the essence. So what came down to the Holy Prophet? Because Surah Al-Qadr says, I reveal it on the night of power. What will convey to thee what that night of power is? I mean, it was an event of cosmic proportion that even Allah says that he is like almost lots of words to say, what will tell you what that night is all about? Well, that was the night. The Holy Prophet, in that physical form of his, was the recipient of the Holy Noor, precepts of Allah. It is the Holy Revelation that came to him in a luminous, in a form of Noor. Because remember, when the Holy Prophet came out of that cave and went to be with Khadija, it's not like, it's not like he had this in his hand and he said, Khadija, look what Allah sent me. It wasn't that. In Batim, in the esoteric, it was the Noor that came to him. And the Holy Revelation is Noor. This is Noor. Noor made word. This is guidance of the Noor. For whom? The whole of mankind. Quran is not only for Muslims. According to the Quran, it was the whole of mankind. But there is a process involved. So the first point, member of the Jamaat, is from a Bhaktivi point of view, because remember Murad Azimah said to us, when you read the Quran, when you look at verses of the Quran, when you look at certain concepts in the Holy Quran, when you look at certain words in the Holy Quran, Azimah said they must, they must represent some meaning to you, some concept to you. But remember, as Imam said, and this is the key, Morana as Imam says to the Jamaat in Farman, he said, remember, we are an esoteric branch of Islam. And esoteric means that which is written is there. There it is. That which is written is there. But the meaning, but the meaning is not there for everyone. It is there only, as Imam is the word, only to those who are part of our Jamaat. Then what is the meaning of this? And what the content of this holy book is? Obviously, you know the answer to that. In our Tarika, our beloved Imam, who is the bearer of that Noor, and you make that connection, our beloved Imam, all Imams are considered the spoken Quran. This is the proof, the silent Quran. And they are both tied together. Ali and the Quran are tied together. The Holy Prophet said, I'm leaving behind you two things, the Book of God and my progeny. And they are both tied together. They can never be separated. They can never be separated. The message is, like all Muslims who consider this the revelation of Allah, <coughs> but this book is made meaningful to us by the Imam of the time. It is the nur of the Imam that guides us to the meaning of what these revelations are according to Ibn al waqt according to the children of the time, which is what the Holy Prophet Muhammad said. You have heard what Allah said. There have been thousands and thousands and thousands of interpretations over time and over history. But which is the one that we are going to follow? Well, that's not a big secret. It's very evident in our, in our faith 
as has been from the time of Maramurtazali, if, as the Holy Prophet said, the Quran is with Maramurtazali, and Maramurtazali is with the Quran, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out where the interpretation should come. And for Shias, indeed, for all Shias, they consider the Holy Imam to be that basis of interpretation. In the case of the Ismaili Tarika, it is the Imam, look at the constitution, that says, that gives the Tawil and the Tawil of Allah's final revelation. Well, having said that, and having set the background, what then must we be conscious of during that night of the Tulkatma? If the experience of the Holy Prophet was that of having received the Noor on that night, that is what the Prophet told us in his 23 years of mission to the people. What was that? He taught us the one singular secret and hakikat, and that is the love of Mulan Tazali and Islam. And he said, through that love, love of the Imam, devotion to the Imam, submission to the Imam, following the Imam, your soul will reach the station of salvation. And it is this hakikat that the Holy Prophet sought to teach the Muslims of his time for the 23 years when he revealed piece by piece by piece by piece to the Muslims what is the inner meaning and what is the outer meaning of things. And you know that was of the Jamaat. In the Holy Quran, Allah refers to people in 14 different categories. 14, one four. Amongst which, two are very evident to us. Allah speaks to people by saying, all ye Muslim, men and women. And then in other places he says, all ye Mu'mins. And there is a verse in the Quran that Allah says, say not, say not that we believe, but say that we profess. In other words, simply to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, doesn't necessarily make you a Mu'min. It makes you a Muslim, but not a Mu'min. So this, unless, this inner understanding of who are Mu'mins, who are Muslims, Imam has given many farmans on that context. Mullah Murtazali has spoken many aspects of this matter. Imam Jafar Sadiq, Imam Muhammad al-Bakir have mentioned many things on such matters. We do not have the time, so we cannot go into the details. But simply to say, Mu'mins, as Imam is defined, is one who has faith. But faith in whom? In the Nur. The Nur of Imam which is Al-Awal, Al-Akhar, Al-Zahir, al batin It is the first, it is the last. It is the hidden and it is the manifest. Because the Quran says, He is the light of the heavens and the earth. That same light that is a source of creation, the source of sustenance, the source of maintenance, the source of illumination, the source of Sirat al mustaqim the source that sustains every life on earth, the source that sustains the whole created creation, the new is in Morana Hazari Mahdi says And it is this specific, it is this specific hakikah that concerns us when we celebrate the Dulkadana. And you all know that the period of Nur is a period of Beitul Kya. The cream of Beitul Kadra is Beitul Kya. In other words, if you want to experience what the Holy Prophet experienced, to become the receptacle of the Holy Nur in you, then do what the Holy Prophet did. 
and that is go into ibadat, do your bhangi. When? At the time that the imam has indicated to us when that noor can be accessed. The whole night of the to Qadra is a preparation. Your zikr, your prayer, forgiveness, compassion, what Alwai Rashid mentioned, wonderful. If you can keep that in your heart, in your mind, in your practice, how does that impact your character? How does that impact your action? All of this becomes important on that night. So members of the Jamaat, don't wait for it to come. Right now, from tonight, start preparing yourself. If you are not coming to Beitul Kiyam, even if you don't have a Beitul Kiyam goal, doesn't matter, come, start coming to Beitul Kiyam. So that on that night, you know your objective is to stay till the morning. Why? Because Sulat al says, angels and spirit descend with all decrees and there is peace until the rising of the dawn. And the great secret that our peers taught us and our imams have taught us and it says the love of Ali only obliterates all sins this is Allah I repeat the love of Ali only obliterates all sins the night of Vaitul Karla is a night of forgiveness and in this regard Mawla Murtaza Ali says to us Mawla Ali says and I quote I am the meaning of Ramzan I am the Vaitul Karla mentioned in the book of God my utterance is decisive for I am Surah al -Hamd. I am the purpose of prayer itself, whether at home or traveling. I am the purpose of fasting and the sacred anniversaries in the months of the year. Imam Ali Ibn Abi Talib Khutbah al -Iftikar. So members of the Jamaat, my objective was to be able to plant the seed in your mind, in your thoughts, in your heart, so that on the night of Vaitul Kadra, you may be inspired by that holy night to stay awake the whole night, participate the whole night. Don't go home at midnight. Even if you feel tired during the time of Vaitul Kya, it's okay. Feel tired. Resist it. Show your love and affection. Show your dedication. Show your tenacity. That no, not tonight. The bear is not going to see my face tonight. My whole dedication will be to my imam in rapt prayer, in rapt love and affection, in rapt forgiveness, and in complete focus and concentration for the holy blessing of that night. Now I'm sure you have questions regarding aspects of it, which will take it into questions and answers. But this is the basic message I wanted to share with you in my segment. Thank you.